Literacy research can be a form of activism through every step of the process, from the kinds of questions you ask, to the literature you review, from the theoretical framework on which you draw, to the methods you employ, from the stories you decide to tell and not tell, to whom, when, where, and perhaps most importantly, why. As a literacy researcher, I have worked in solidarity with minoritized young people in youth centers designed to meet their needs, value their strengths, and foster their aspirations. I've worked in solidarity with students eager to become educated so that they might work more effectively as advocates for themselves and others. And I've worked with teachers across schools and districts who share and inform my commitments to work against oppressions, including those defined by homophobia, transphobia, and racism, as well as fear and hatred of linguistic, national, and religious diversity. These relationships are cultivated and sustained over time in a variety of spaces, particularly spaces where these youth students and teachers feel the most comfortable, so that we can challenge ourselves to trust one another enough to allow ourselves to be vulnerable with one another so that we might, every now and then, experience the privilege of learning from one another. An example of an effort to bridge the worlds of local activism and literacy is a book discussion group that I co-facilitated with my colleague, Caroline Clark. We were a part of a teacher inquiry group comprised of teachers committed to combating homophobia and transphobia in Central Ohio schools, a group that met in one another's homes for over 13 years. When the teachers said that they wanted to read LGBTQ inclusive text in their classrooms but they couldn't because of the homophobia and transphobia in their schools, Caroline and I started a book discussion group for these teacher students. We met with these young people and oftentimes their teachers regularly in the local LGBTQ youth center to read and discuss LGBTQ themed books for almost three years. As a result, teachers could share this literature with their students. Students could engage in this literature as well as spend time at a place that was distinctly queer friendly, providing a contrast to their school experiences. In this way, Caroline and I worked against homophobia and transphobia with teachers and students by engaging in literacy practices.